Now we have we have we've successfully captured the email from our confirm password dialog here. We know that it now is getting sent back to our edit profile uh, fragment through our interface up here because we were able to actually print out the password. Now we are ready to authenticate and then finally check the email and then change it. So uh, first of all, I just want to say a couple things about Firebase here. If you're wondering, Mitch, this is all great, but where do you get this information from? I feel like you're just pulling it out of your ass. Um, basically, I just look on, I just read the Firebase documentation. It's pretty good. So, for example, if you wanted to change the user's email, I would just go Android Firebase right there. So, Android Firebase, how to change email. Let's search that, and I'm going to click on the first link right here. So, you can see it's a Firebase uh, link, which is the one I had open right here. And this is the documentation for managing users. And if you look on the side here, you can see all the contents. And this option right here, update a user's profile, I would just click here. And you can see that there is an option for updating the profile but that's actually that's um, looks like JavaScript so that's not Android so if you look over here we're actually in the web section so let's go over to the Android manage users section and then click on update users profile and you can see here this is this actually um, shows you how to do it so this is updating a profile this is setting a user's email this is what we're after here so this is essentially what we want to do this is what we're aiming to do we want to update the email address to this new email address here. But if you read this important kind of section right here, it says, to set a user's email address, a user must have signed in recently. So that, that's what I'm talking about with the re-authentication. So we can click on this, and this is how you would re-authenticate a user. And this is exactly what we're going to go over in this video right here. So let's uh, get started with that. Uh, actually, I can just copy it from the documentation here. So I'm just gonna literally copy this out right here. Re-authenticate a user. Hit copy. Going to paste it up here in our interface and tab all this stuff over. Import everything that I need. And here's is here's where you're authenticating the credentials. So this would be the user's email, and we can get that by doing auth, get current user, get email. And the password we will have gotten from the interface here. So we can just pass the password. And that and then this method here will get called on our user which is the Firebase user right here. It's gonna go re-authenticate. You can also go mauth, get current user, same sort of thing. Um, then we pass the credential, which was this object right here. Uh, that error, not, oh, it's because I didn't import that library, so there we go. So if it's successful, it'll say user was re-authenticated, and we could probably do a failure uh, message too. So we can do if uh, task dot, is successful, then we can say, okay, yeah, we did actually successfully re-authenticate. So I, we don't need to print out a toast, actually. We don't need to tell the user that they were successfully re-authenticated. Otherwise, we go log and re-authentication failed. And that's it. This will re-authenticate the user in the back end so that um, we can make changes to the email. Because if you check out the documentation here, it says, you must have recently signed in. In other words, we have to re I think it's, I'm not sure what the time limit on it, but maybe it's five minutes or something like that. I'm not really sure, but uh, that will that will take care of that. So let's go back to our project, or actually let's, um, so this is what we actually need to do now, this stuff. And now that we have re-authenticated, the next step is to confirm whether or not that email is in use. So inside of this task is successful method here, now that we know that we're re-authenticated, we need to um, use that method that I was talking about down here, fetch providers for email. And once again, that is just taken straight from the Firebase database documentation. So I can say Android Firebase, how to um, check if email already exists. And let's see, there's a stack overflow one. Let's look for the actual Firebase one, I don't see one, so let's check here. Go to get users provider specific profile information. Um, yeah, yeah, maybe one of these, maybe this too. That's currently signed. Get users profile. Update it. Okay, so I actually don't see that method anywhere. Maybe I did get it from Stack Overflow. 
Yeah, I mean, I could have got it from Stack Overflow. I'm really not sure. So, but I do. Let's actually click one of these links because it looks like I've been there. Create user. Create user. So here we go. This is the method right here. Use the authenticator and you fetch providers uh, for email. That's what we're after right here. So let's go to our project and that's what we're going to do. So we'll go auth, just like we saw, and fetch providers for email. And this is where we pass the email, get text to string, and then we add on complete listener, uh, new on complete listener. And we can semicolon that off down there. And once again, we just have uh, a task here and we want to check to see if it was successful. So if uh, task dot is successful and then we have else and let's write some uh, comments up here just to kind of separate things a little bit. So this one is going to be um, so check to see if the change is not if no if the email is not already present in the database. And this, this will be, I guess I can add some more here so it's more clear. So this is kind of, you know, like step one and then step two. And so if the task is successful, that means that the email does in fact already exist. And so we can get the result of the task. We can go uh, task dot uh, get result and then get providers, get size, or actually just size. And if the size equals one, that means we actually retrieved something. So let's go, um, we can say that email is already, already in use. So in other words, you can't, you can't change it. So we can give the user a toast message at this point saying toast get activity that email is already in use and otherwise we want to do here, meaning if the if the result size is um, zero. So let's actually do an else if. We do else if the task size equals to zero. That would mean that we it was unable to find any email, so that means it's available. So we go that that email is available. And then at this point, now we're ready to actually update the email because now, now we know it's available so the user can change it. So let's go to the documentation again. And um, what are we after? We're gonna be after this method right here. So let's copy that, go back to our project, paste that in, and to get the user, you auth, get current user, update the email so we can pass um, this parameter up here. Emails available, so update it, and then so we want a success message too, so we can copy, uh, copy this toast here, saying that the email was updated. So email updated, and uh, one thing I want to watch out for is this. So this could potentially throw a null pointer. Oh, so actually it won't. I don't think it ever will return zero. It will return null if there it do, if one doesn't exist. So let's uh, let's just actually we'll just change this to an else statement. We'll delete all this logic here and just do else. That will get rid of that. And then let's uh, surround this in a try catch to catch the null pointer exception. So null pointer exception E log E plus E, e dot get message. And let's surround that there. There we go. So just in case this does actually throw a null pointer. Okay, so I think we're ready to update this email and this, yeah, I think we're good. So let's run it and we'll give it a try. Okay, so let's go to the profile, edit my profile, and scroll to the bottom. And so the currently the only two email addresses in the database are Mitch at Tavian.ca and Mitch Tavian at live.com. So let's try to change it to Mitch Tavian at live.com and see if it lets me. So I'll just confirm my password, confirm. That email is already in use. So okay, cool, it doesn't let me do that. So now I'll change it to something 
uh, ran something different. I'll do Mitch at Tavian dot com because that'll be my original one is Tavian dot ca. So let's hit change and confirm the password. Cool. So now email is updated. Let's actually check the Firebase database here. So we'll go into the authentication section. And you can see that my email was updated to Mitch at Tavian dot com. And one thing that we haven't done, we haven't updated the email address in our users section here, so we're still going to need to do that. So you can see that my email is still mitch at tavian.ca, but that's very simple. Actually, this video isn't too long, so maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll do it quickly right now. So let's minimize this, and we'll go into Firebase methods, and where are you? Firebase methods, update email. Do I have that yet? Update email. Nope. So it's going to be very similar to the update username method here. So I'm just going to copy that. Update email. Change the logs. Updating email to, whoops, this has got to be email, email. And we only need to insert it into the user's um, node so we can get rid of that. And so we go users, user ID field will be email. So we're going to need to add that field and then we just pass the email. So let's add that field to the strings folder. Go up to where the, the fields are here. So field, email, and change this to email. Done, done, okay. So that actually should be good. I'm just gonna write some comments. Update the email and the user, users node. And I want to write some comments for update username also. So update username username in the users node and user account settings node. So now let's go back to edit profile fragment. And once we successfully update the email, we can do Firebase methods dot update email, and then just pass our new email address, which is this right here. So that should be good. Um, for now, I'm going to go into the database really quick and I'm going to update these manually. So just go dot com, copy that and do this. That's actually, oh yeah, I only need to do that one. And now we'll rerun the app and we're going to try to change that email again. All right, so let's go to the profile edit profile and we can see that our email is going to be mitch at tavian.com so now let's change it back to mitch at tavian.ca and I'll bring up the Firebase database before I do anything so you can see it says mitch at tavian.com now let's hit this type in our password hit confirm and wait till it says successful email updated now let's refresh the authentication screen and there we go mitch at tavian.ca now let's check the database and midgetaving.ca. Cool. So that is how you update someone's email. It's obviously way more complicated than updating other information because it's part of the authentication system, so it's got to be secure. Um, so that, yeah, that's going to be the end of that. In the next one, we're going to start updating the rest of these fields. So currently, all we can update is the username and the email, which are the two hardest things. Now we're going to update the rest of the information, which is going to be very simple. All we're going to be doing is uh, Firebase methods and basically just inserting the data just like you see here because we don't have that requirement that they need to be unique. So I'll see you guys in that next video.